Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I want to show you a tool that I've recently started using more and more to analyse my sales and also to optimise my listings and make more sales as a result. So if you're looking to improve your books or make more in terms of royalties then make sure you watch the whole video. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Paul Miles, and I do videos on how to make it, keep it, and grow it, and that's your money I'm talking about. If you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. So, the tool we're going to be looking at today is a Chrome plugin, and it's a free plugin from the Helium 10 suite of software. Now, in order to download this plugin, you just go to the Helium 10 website. I'll leave the link down below. You go to, or just hover over the resources tab and click on the Chrome extension. And then it's just a case of downloading this from the Chrome web store. And again, as I said, it's all free. Now, when you do download it, you'll have the little plugin in your plugin bar or apps bar and if you click on it you can see here it will give you some options which we'll come to in a moment. Now when you do do a search on Amazon and in this case we're doing a search for graph paper notebook you'll find that at the top of each book it'll give you some very useful data. One is the ranking in its categories. Now this can be useful because if you're producing a similar book, say you've produced a graph paper notebook and you're wondering what um, category to publish in, rather than search through that whole list on KDP or use some of the other tools, why not just go and have a look and see what other books are listed in? particularly if they're listed in a category that they've got a very low ranking in because it may mean there's less competition to rank high in that particular category. It'll also give you the ISN, ASIN number of each book and also, more importantly, it will give you the best sellers ranks of each book. You can see here this one's got a best sellers rank of 2,941, which can save you a bit of time rather than clicking into each book. But the real power of this tool is when you actually click on one of the books. Now, for this example, we're going to be looking at one of the best selling graph paper uh, notebooks out there. Now, the reason we're looking at this is because I've got a graph paper notebook published. There you go, I'm giving it away one of my niches. If you want me to do a video on that particular niche and explore keywords, etc., then please do let me know in the comments below and I might do that. Now this is a very popular and competitive niche, but there are some uh, less competitive sub-niches in there. And if you want me to tell you about those, again, I can. The reason I started using this tool, and I've had it installed in my Chrome browser for a little while, but it was only recently that I started to see the real use of it. And that was because I've got a graph paper notebook published and I started running ads on it. And the ads were going fine. The ACOS was, you know, it was around the break even level, which was fine because what I'm after doing is getting the sales history on my book and getting those reviews coming in. So hopefully it can rank organically. I'm not sure how well it's going to work because as I say it's a very competitive niche, but I do plan on ad running ads for a little while. But the problem was over the last few weeks, I noticed that sales had started to drop off. So I started to analyze my com campaign and I was looking at bid prices, click through rates, cost per clicks. I was starting to exclude sort of um, certain keywords. So keywords I was targeting, I was starting to put them in the negative keyword list. And I was, if I could optimize my listing because the books didn't appear to be selling. So I put my book up on Amazon. I was looking at the listing and I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at this uh, Helium 10 tool and I noticed sales had started to, to drop off as my ads and my reports were telling me and I was trying to work out what was happening so I decided to look at one of the other uh, 
graph paper notebooks that was selling well. Now, when you, you open up the product, there's a few bits of information that we'll just quickly cover here, which are quite useful. One is, and you may have seen this little badge up here, and that's uh, you may have seen that when I've been doing my book reviews. If you just hover over it, it will give you some some useful information. One is about the image. That's probably not as much use for us because you have little choice over that. But what may be of use is that it will give you the character count of the title and give you a score if the number of characters is less than 150, the number of bullet points. Now, I'm a big fan of bullet points. And again, I've mentioned this in my book reviews because bullet points are very easy, quick to read by customers rather than having to sit there and and plow through a couple of paragraphs of writing, which on the whole they probably won't do, but, but bullet points are very visual and they can see the information straight away. And so it will mark you down if you've got less than five bullet points. And also, uh, similar as the title, it will tell you the character count in the description. Obviously, the, the, the longer the description, uh, the better that might be for SEO purposes. Now, if you were going to do a longer description, what I would suggest doing is maybe putting the bullet points above the longer description so that customers that don't want to read that description do get the vital information um, in those bullet points and, and that would mainly be the features of your book and then if we scroll down we can see here we've got uh, how the the sales rank has varied and how the price has varied now this has been pretty much a consistent price and we can see that the best sellers rank has slowly started to increase, which shows a decrease in sales overall. Now, sometimes you can find very useful information in that some publishers will change the price of their book and you can see how the best sellers rank has changed with price. And I noticed something quite interesting when I was doing this on some books is that when authors have actually reduced the price, their best sellers rank has increased so they've not been making as many sales, which is quite interesting because uh, you may assume that just reducing the price of a book will get more sales. But actually, that can sometimes send them a kind of subconscious message to a buyer that the book is cheaper than other products that are out there. And so you may not make as many sales, but it's a useful way if you are changing the, the price of your book to look at how that affects the, the, the the sales rank and, and the number of sales you're making on the book. But one of the most important features which we can access here is X-Ray. You can also access this from the um, plugin drop-down box. And when it opens, you've got the book here. Now, if you open this up on the, a listing of books, you'll have the whole listing of the books there for the particular uh, search term that you've used. And that can be quite useful to compare the best sellers ranks of all the books listed say on that page and the number of sales being made in relation to that best sellers rank but it was this feature here the sales graph and if we click on this we can see the sort of general trend of the sales and we've got this sort of day-to-day -day number of sales and we've got this what's called a seven-day move and average that's an average of the sales over the preceding seven days and we've got this uh, thicker line which shows the overall trend now over the 30 days it just doesn't tell us a great deal it just says that sales are reducing but what was more useful was by looking at the 90 day graph and even the one year graph and I could see that the best selling book over the last sort of few weeks to a month had also experienced a drop in sales so there I was trying to optimize my advertising campaign, trying to work out why my sales had dropped. But when I went and looked at the bestsellers, uh, best-selling book, the sales had dropped also. And you can see sales increased rapidly um, over August, towards the, the end of August, and then dropped off. And having a think about this and the nature of the book, it's highly likely that this is sort of a back-to-school phenomenon uh, prior, going back to, prior to going back to school, college or university, people were buying these um, books these sort of, to use as exercise books or for their college courses. And then sales then dropped as people started back at school. So I basically wasted my time 
trying to optimize my campaign, but it also gave me some reassurance knowing that it wasn't an issue with my book, it wasn't an issue with my advertising campaign, it was just one of those cyclical things that you could expect to occur. And as you can see here from the graph, if we look back to a year ago, it's the sales are at a similar level as to what they are now. And it seems that sales will continue to drop very slightly, increase in January again due to people going back to, to school and college and then remain pretty level until about August next year. So you can use that information to compare the sales of your books and the trend of your books. You could use it if you're doing research for a particular niche to see if there are any big trends and see if you can jump on that trend. So if you were looking at this niche, you may, you may have looked at this graph and gone, wow, okay, if I try and create one of these books in May or June in time for that big surge in demand, you may get those early sales of your book, um, which can be encouraging, but can also help with the ranking of your book. Some niches you may find will increase around the holiday period, the Christmas period, or, you know, may even be sort of the summer period, depending on, on the type of book you're publishing. And you may see similar graphs like this if, you know, if you're looking at things like planners or calendars. So it's good for timing. It's good for comparing your book to like books in the same niche. And then you can get this sort of overall picture, which can help when you're strategizing and using tactics to increase sales. So overall, I think this is a very useful tool. And it's free. I forgot to show one feature, which was here on the product page. You can look at keywords and what this will do. Now, this will only apply if you've got a subscription to the Cerebro plugin. And this will do the reverse ASIN uh, lookup, which is extremely useful if you want to look at what keywords your competitors are using and where they rank for those particular keywords. And we can see in this case, if we scroll down, these are all the keywords that this book is ranking for at num number one position. And we know that the number one position in search results gets most of the uh, traffic. So we can say, okay, this book is getting most of its traffic from this keywords. So in effect, you can steal these keywords and use them in your own books. However, as opposed to the plugin, which is free, this is a paid for a monthly subscription, or I think you may be able to pay for it for a year as well. And, it, and there are other tools in the Helium 10 suite, but this is one that I use reasonably frequently. But for the demonstration today, you don't need that. Um, you've got that, that free tool, which is very useful and may help with optimizing, as I say, timing your book and, and also looking at your sales patterns. So that's it for now. I hope you did enjoy that and find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But more importantly, make sure you hit the subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and until next time, goodbye.